Belter in mid, Yellow Pune on AD, and Crepo on support. We'll see if they can bring out anything new. I think uh, EG and Curse are the teams we kind of give that uh, moniker to. That They are the ones to do things new. They are exactly. the guys to bring out new things. And we can see that with uh, 36 new picks from EG coming out into the split. Yeah, 36 different champions right. picked. We talked about Cloud9 too, not necessarily being the team to have too much champion diversity, and it shows less, way less champions. 23 yeah. different champions picked for Cloud9 to the 36 of Evil Geniuses. We've seen the Volibear, we've seen the Soraka, the Urgot, Urgot. unique champions, Pobelter as well, the most diverse mid laner yeah. we have here in North America as far as his champion pool goes. For a while I thought it's he was kind of on like a, a personal endeavor to yeah. just play a different champion every game. Yeah, let's try to get a <laughs> uh, competitive LCS win with every champion yeah. in, the, in, the, uh, in the world. A to Z, let's go. We'll see what they have for picks and bans. A lot of what we've been seeing for the few uh, past few weeks with yeah. that Pantheon, the Gragas, and not so much Renekton on the ban list, but he'll find one here because Ball's in the top lane. Yeah, I like the Pantheon ban first and foremost only because that was pretty much the best Snoopy has looked yeah. when he was on Pantheon. Even even both of his games. Uh, the, the two games that Snoopy played Pantheon, mm -hmm. his first one was against TSM and he camped Bjergsen and actually gave Pro Belter a fairly decent edge in that one. So Pantheon ban in particular, I'm a fan of. And we talked a little bit about where EG's win came from, a very early aggression in the early part of the game on Crumbs, who yeah. was on Elise. That's going to be picked up by Cloud9 right here from Medios. Yeah, I think EG would be very smart to pick Leona here, mm -hmm. only to try and mess up a little bit of Cloud9's champion rosters. The reason I say that is because Lemonation has played every game this split on either Thresh or Leona. Yep. Thresh is banned, Leona's now taken away. Only two champions that he has really wandered out into the water on. It's going to get deep for him onto this one. The champion pool will really see where it goes for Lemonation. The Lulu's picked up, but it's also picked up with, like you said, the Leona. So that's obviously yeah. going to Pole Belter. Lulu mid. Yep. Something that is incredibly hard to play against. Very few things match up against that. Mm -hmm. uh, Kale can outscale Lulu and can deal mostly in a 1v1 lane. Other than that, though, we haven't really seen anything beat up Lulu. Her base damages are so high. Her utility and shielding scales yeah. into the late game. It is the new thing. It was banned in three games yesterday. Picked by Link in the last game of our day. And yep. then Link just destroyed on it. Going pretty crazy in the early game he did for himself. But right now, into our week six, day two. Let's see what these guys have for each other in the morning. They're trying to wake up, get their best on. With Shivana being picked out here for Cloud9, and the Sivir yeah. coming in, who also saw quite a few bans yesterday. But the Stampede will be good for go. Yeah, Cloud Sivir's this weird champion who's seeing a lot of bans at only the highest level of play because there's been so much about just team positioning that's been giving teams bigger and bigger advantages. And the move speed that Sivir grants is just absolutely ridiculous for that. Cloud9 knows how to utilize it better than anyone. Well, they have Yasuo going onto the side of EG. He's been finding a little bit more playtime here in week six, and he also found wins on that playtime. And something I really like about this team comp so far from EG is when you bring a Lulu mid, even though she does synergize well with tanks, she makes she makes tanks. So Yasuo can become a very hard to kill champion in the top lane if Inox just plays it and gets farmed and then have even more threat because he won't necessarily be able to be killed. It's a nice mix of defense from the mid lane and offense from the top lane. Just giving Yasuo so many pop-ups to work with. He's got that Ooh. Vi and now the Lulu and we see the lock-ins of LeBlanc and Annie coming in. Very high AP damage there. LeBlanc has obviously seen a lot of bans. The first loss LeBlanc saw in the North American LCS was yesterday when Boy Boy played her. 11 and 1 now. But it's interesting because Lulu is a really, really good matchup against the Blanc. That's it's almost why she difficult. came out, right? Exactly. That's one of the big reasons she rose to prominence. And now that they've picked into it, just shows a brazen amount of confidence by High and the rest of Cloud9. Or they're hoping to pick off other targets like Yasuo in team fights with that LeBlanc. Well, High is 3 and 0 on LeBlanc in all three attempts. So. Looks like he will be all right. We've seen Yellow Pete going back onto Ezreal once in a while, and it looks like it will be locked in once again. All right, so team composition-wise, Cloud9 has a lot of movement speed uh, just based off the Sivir-Shivana synergy. 
I do wonder how effective High is going to be, though. He's going to have to play very well in and around Pole Belter's Lulu. Mm -hmm. they're, they're a good team fight composition, whereas EG, they have that nice high amount of damage because they haven't necessarily had to pick a true top lane tank. They're getting past that because they have Lulu, who scales so well in the utility. Uh, 0.6 ratio on her shield, 0.5 ratio on her wild yep. growth for healing. So I, I honestly think that kind of healing and shields scale better than damage late game because armored magic resist factors in. It's going to be a very interesting matchup. I think Poe Belter versus High will probably swing this game. All right. Well, with this, it's, it seems like Inox in the top lane gets back onto his carries. Yeah. Gets back into something he likes. He does have a game on Yasuo that didn't go mm -hmm. so hot, but we also saw that EG wasn't really in tune with yeah. all the communication and organization yet. That in initial early, Yasuo yeah. game was so early on into the season, they picked it with Cassidy. They picked a tankless team, mm -hmm. but they didn't have anyone to boost up Yasuo's right. tankiness. They do this time. All right, so the game's about to get underway. Let's see who you voted on to take the win. According to LOLESports.com, 77% of you think Cloud9 are going to come out on top. Yeah, that's a pretty expected percentage. Yeah. It's actually much lower than we would have seen out of Cloud9 early on in the year when they seemed like that untouchable, unstoppable force, and EG was reeling a little bit. But now, with that win yesterday, yeah. EG was looking better than they have all split. Wonder if they figured something out, or something out, especially with that Lulu. It has had so much potency yeah. in all of our LCS games. It's a lot of teams have been able to control the mid game a lot. Mm -hmm. Not even, maybe that's a contribution to Lulu. Maybe not. Probably not. I think it is. But, all right. Yeah. So we'll see. And Lulu's early and mid game all over the place. It's able to being able to go down to Dragon, have that mm -hmm. control over the area, zone it out, and get the win. I was always impressed the fact that Lulu came to fruition without having an ultimate that did a, a ton of damage, like every other mids does. But you know what? If you use it correctly. You don't have to be always dealing damage. The utility yeah. will get you all the way home. Lulu will wear you down. Yeah. We see what have, they have for each other as they make their way onto the rift. It's game 53. Like we said, we'll be halfway Welcome through the split after this. Rift. Yeah, four more games. Mm -hmm. Halfway to the halfway point <laughs> of the entire LCS season. There's some BM going on. Well, this is, this is Sneaky actually trying not to get zoned off. Uh, because yesterday when EG invaded, mm -hmm. they used Yellow Pete to zone the mid laner back so they could sneak into the side brush. That's why Sneaky's actually taking these hits, because he doesn't want to get zoned back. But he's got to dodge a little better than that. All right, swap oh, him out. Swap Next him guy. <laughs> Lemonation now. All right, he's now. three for three. Let's see what he's got. Hey, hey, four for four. We got bets on the next one. We'll take him up on the desk over here. Yeah, he's just he got out of there. <laughs> he's not, oh, coming Wait. back for more. No, he's not. This is better than Cleavers in the top lane. Yeah, it's so. funny how they pinged that one there because <laughs> this one actually had a point. <laughs> it, was, it was trying to zone off so that EG could have the fear of invading. But Why Cloud9. Not? Do it again. Don't fix it if it's not broken. Try to get a little bit of a move in again if Cloud9 wasn't paying attention. EG may have gotten a bit of an upper hand, but they both back off. Everybody sits it even and get some wards down. Medios actually going to start. Waltzing over. At his red buff. This is a fairly common tactic where the jungler will just start where his bottom lane is because they can give him mm -hmm. a better pull. But in this case, he's just going to have to solo it because he's Elise. We've well, actually heard I the odd ones say in interviews that that's yeah. a little bit easier for Elise. Yeah, I do, I do kind of wonder why he's starting red mm -hmm. at this point. It would mean he wants to probably rotate for the top or a mid lane game right. fairly early on. Uh, it could also be a tactical decision knowing that Snoopy's going to start blue. Uh, so he can meet him for potential counter ganks. Knowing how well Snoopy got Inox and Poe Belter going in the last game, he just wants to be there to stop it. Poe Belter starting with that shield and throwing a little bit of damage onto High, but you can see the trade Ooh. definitely in High's favor for now until Poe Belter hits level two. Yeah, High's got that level one figured out. Plus, he started with the Crystalline Flask, so he mm -hmm. will be able to outsustain Poe Belter. Uh, definitely planned this, this early lane out, knowing when his windows are against Lulu, because I definitely feel like once Pope Belter gets a few more points in that shield, he would win these trades against the Blanc. Uh, not looking like the case right now, though. There, he's got level two for himself there. Probably be able to Glitter Lance these out. We see that Meteos is over, taking his blue, and starting on the red seems like it may be able to work out because there is a hard push by Enox in that top lane. Yeah, Yasuo very strong, levels one through three. Stack up that damage on his E and just blow somebody up. Uh, but with the double Thorn Shield starting that top lane, there's not going to be too much direct dueling yep. 
unless we get some jungler intervention. Looks like Snoopy sees that his lanes are somewhat on the win. Goes ahead wards top lane to make it safe for and Nox. He is very far pushed up. We're just watching high here. He's got to be careful. Yeah, unless he uses his distortion to harass, he's completely safe. Uh, LeBlancs are really only counter gankable because she is so mobile if she wants to be. You hear Alex in Europe from Gambit talk about champions like LeBlanc in Italy in lane, how it's so annoying to play against something that can play safe and you can't kill yeah. it. Gets, yeah. gets under your skin. Bobother will have the option to do the same thing. He can just wave clear. Uh, whenever High goes to Rome as well, would be a really good opportunity for that. Meteor's hoping to catch Snoopy in a rotation here. The Spidey sense. This is where he is. Can he get the last hit? Dun 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 dun. Takes a few extra steps. He's like, oh, he is here. And they're just going to go ahead and waltz this one. Out of there. Yeah. there we go. Took a few too many auto attacks there. He should have went straight towards the lane. Oh, well. So we got vision on Snoopy. That's called out to Cloud9. They can go a little aggressive if they want for the time being. That's already in the hands of Sneaky and Lemonation in the bottom lane. They seem to be doing well for themselves. 31 to 17 in CS. So it's, it's going in their favor. Yeah, a lot of power in that bottom lane right now. Lemonation doing a lot to zone out Crepo and crew down bottom there. Leona is a very one-dimensional support in a sense, where even though she can have these amazingly powerful games, if she falls behind, there's not too much to do because all of her power is loaded into her initiation. Yeah. If EG can get going a little bit in the spot lane, uh, it's going to be amazing. One of the most dangerous things in the world is Leona with ultimate when the enemy doesn't have flash. It's basically a kill whenever she wants it. But if they can't actually get a kill when she lands yeah. the ultimate, then it means nothing. Just wave clearing right now. Lemon Nation to stop any oh, engagements. Oh, this will be a big fight. With a stun. And Nox is going to be Snoopy's walking back. He's a little bit far behind. He, he has to run all balls. the way around. Make sure to get a little bit more flow before he meets Meteos on this one. And now we get Snoopy to come in as well. Balls forced to flash out of this. Meteos is going to repel as well to the farthest minions. They're going to be safe for now, but a great counter. Yeah, really well played by Inox there to delay enough for Snoopy to walk all the way around the corner and then land that Vault Breaker. And a poorly timed roam actually by Pobelter. He thought that fight was going to sprawl into the river and then he would have been there to support. He's only level 4 Lulu, who's actually been getting pushed in a fair bit by Heiz LeBlanc. Yeah, Heiz LeBlanc is halfway oh, to 6 try to right cut now. He's going to try to do a little extra damage. Let's get the vision on. Make sure he doesn't get himself in any dangerous positions as well because he may want to be diving in a few if he hits that 6 first. This is a very intriguing matchup. I want to see how this develops because so far High mm. High has been very surprising being able to out farm Pobelter early. But with glitter lances like that, that could turn fairly quickly in the mid lane. Normally the Blanc lanes, you're kind of thinking like any second there's gonna be a kill. Any second there is gonna be a kill. Elimination looks Ooh. like he could be the one to go down. First blood is ticking, but it's not gonna be enough just yet for either Yellow Pea or Lemon. Well, the barrier had to get burned by Pete, so he's basically back, and Sneaky is near full health with the barrier, playing very brazenly right now. Sometimes you just wish your champion didn't tell the oh. other guy to duck. Yellow Pete gets <laughs> out of the way of that boomerang. Sitter always giving it away. Yep. But yeah, 54 to 34. Going to be a big lead there for Sneaky. Uh, Pete and Crepo need to be able to go even in that lane because I really feel like when EG solo laners can get the help they deserve yeah. from Snoopy, they're in a very good position to win. As long as Crepo and Pete can hold their own, that is not being the case so far. And it seems like with that, it's it's either an all the way or nothing. There's no middle ground to that. It's either the lanes get help and they do amazing, or and they can't or they can't find their way. Yeah. Something EG has to work on a little bit coming into the middle part of the split. It's one of those things that happens with inexperienced teams. There's a lot of action coming in, in the jungle here. A roam by Lemonation actually. Like he is up level four to five on Snoopy, but he is not going to really sweat this one too much as he walks out. Oh, bit of damage. Not bad. Pope Belter getting that lane shove on. Once he gets a blue buff, he's going to be turning into a very obnoxious Yordle in the mid lane there. Uh, catching up on farm as well, you can see. Doesn't take much for Lulu to get the edge. An early pink ward again from evil geniuses going down in that brush. We saw yesterday when Pope Belter was playing Zed. The first pink ward he bought off that kill on crumbs lasted all game. True. All game. And that requires his team to have an immense amount of map pressure. Yeah. Something that EG is going to be trying for, but Cloud9 is one of the most difficult teams to pressure out. So much of their game plans have been around picking very strong lanes, shoving in, and then allowing roam to happen. It's what they're trying to do this game with the Sivir pick, with the LeBlanc early aggression, with the counter jungling from Meteos. 
So far, though, EG hasn't fell prey to any of those tricks. You still have to worry about that card up the sleeve that is Yasuo. And Ox can still be doing huge damage He's farming later. really well up there. He's farming pretty well. Balls, we know him to do pretty good for himself. So we'll have to see how that Ooh. goes as we get up to 10, 15, and 20 minutes when these fights around the dragon happen. In the bottom lane, we got some good trades going on as Meteos is back in the jungle, back on Snoopy's tail. Yeah, here's where the issues come in, actually. That was a two-level edge Meteos had on Snoopy. And you notice when oh, he counter junglers, wow. he's been leaving the little things and scaring Snoopy off the spot. So he'll still have to go back there and clear those camps for no real gold or experience. Right now, Meteos is reaping the benefits of his lanes pushing across the board. And we'll see if he can turn that into an edge. There's the pick ward. Got it. Picking yep. early lanes that can really crush down your opponent to the turret, giving Meteos time to be in the jungle and be in Snoopy's hair twice now in nine minutes in the game. And it's really, yeah. like you said, affected Snoopy. And it has more impacts on the rest of the game, too. Mm -hmm. You notice there how High was really just using his distortion to go in and harass. He wouldn't be able to do that if Snoopy was a threat in this game. Right. But because Meteos has kept Snoopy down, therefore High can play more aggressively against Pobelter. It's a mismatched matchup now because one guy has potential jungle pressure and the other does not. Not get in the lanes they want. We saw Pobelter on Zed. It's what he wanted on Lulu this game. But with that, he was able to get his 1v1 kills a lot easier than he would be here on a LeBlanc. It's very safe. So, see if they can wait it out. Pull up that mid game where EG has been getting their communication together. They have a little bit of time. We haven't seen the Dragon yet so far. Still in that farming laning yeah. phase. It's 12,700 to 11.9. So, it's not too much of a lead just yet. Yeah, there is a pretty good lead here for Cloud9 just on two members, Meteos uh, and then the Sneaky plus Lemonation lane. That Sivir vs. Ezra lane is just a disaster right now for EG. A 37 CS difference, and there's the Tibbers. They're going alt for alt, the flash Q, Ooh. and then the Solar Flare for the consistent alt stacking. Or rather, CC stacking, I should say. Yeah, a defensive Solar Flare, though, and then he had to flash away. There's still flashes on Cloud9. Pobelter also having to burn flash. So many of these summoner spells are getting used defensively for evil geniuses, which means that Cloud9 would have a big summoner spell edge when they decide to go for Dragon. Yeah, like right now, and that happened between bottom and mid lane. Inox can't even teleport down to help. He's not running that summoner spell this game. No it Leona like, ult as yeah. well. Uh, but the stun would be charged by Lemon Nation, even if he does mm -hmm. not have a Tibbers, meaning the threat is very real. What actual damage would EG be able to bring to this? Not much, but they still managed to scare them off. I like the pressure. They were able to get Cloud9 to think twice. They call the audible and head back to the lane. Mm. Meteos to his jungle for now. Interesting call there by Cloud9. Uh, normally, I would expect them to just brute force that dragon down. But, you know, with Sivirult down, their mobility didn't have an edge. And All they right. were probably just respecting the Lulu ult more so than anything. There's a gank by Meteos. No. Maybe they just want to get the kill first. First blood comes in. High is trying to be a distraction up top. Snoopy cannot come to help. Yeah, Krepo's flash was down. The return gank was very good. They had vision control of the dragon area because they just fainted a dragon kill. Now they're on a strong push. It's just a matter of time and the method oh, of the madness for dear. Cloud9. And it looks like they're going hard once again. High gets himself the ignite. He should live off of this with the auto attack. Yellow P grabs himself. Blue buff. Two kills. It's going to be Lemon Nation going down now. And EG has turned this one around nicely. Two kills in a 3v4. Partly because it was in between the turret and partly because Lulu is so damn hard to kill at this point in the game. The wild growth really kept him alive. It allowed Yellow Pete to really pick up a garbage kill, get someone a really low one auto attack of the turret, and that will help them swing that lane a little bit back. Didn't lose the dragon either, and evened out the kills for the game. Very pivotal moment there. So we get a little look inside the window of what it looks like when these teams go. Yeah, they locked down high hard right there. Uh, and then Yellow Pete was sure to focus him down. And just look how much investment they had to put in mm -hmm. to Pobelt. And not only did they cut him off, they used Ooh. everything afterwards as well. Like I was saying, we saw that fight down bottom, but it's not been Balls and Inox have joined the party yet. EG trying to get Dragon here with that vision this of Meteos. This is really big, though. There is a Tibbers up, and I wonder how brazen EG wants to be right here. All right, they're going to end up forfeiting the Dragon. They do not want to fight the 4v5, just trying to go for a steal. Very nicely played by Evil Geniuses to come back with that. They didn't lose the top turret just yet, but they are going to be able to crush this down. The minion wave just behind Cloud9. Yeah, interesting part of the game plan there. 
Cloud9 normally a very dragon-focused team. That's what Pobelter said was going to be Evil Genius's focus coming into this game, is just denying Cloud9 dragons. It costs uh, Inox his turret in the top lane, which could slow down his very key farming right now. This is the moment in the game where Inox needs to get his farm uh, if he wants to have an impact later on Yasuo. But the Team Dragon keeps the gold at least manageable. Cloud9 still with the lead, though. In that bottom lane, Krepo has just completely rushed the Sight Stone without getting that gold generation for himself just yet. Yeah, they've been aggressed on quite hard, and they need to keep Meteos and the rest out. Krepo often skips gold generation, especially when he's behind, mm. because he is trying to get that little bit of power boost so he can fight toe-to-toe -to -toe with people even while they are behind. Can't say enough, though, about Sneaky and Lemon Nation destroying that lane. Sivir is not necessarily a good matchup against Ezreal. Ezreal can theoretically outpoke and outharass. Mm -hmm. uh, the zoning of Lemon Nation is probably what did it for them, being able to just threaten Krepo and never get hit with a timing engage. Pink Ward getting cleared out by Pole Belter. His blue buff is on. I believe Yellow Pete is still rocking the one he got from high just a few minutes ago. So they're sitting pretty in this mid part of the game. As we said, where EG would start to make a bit of their comeback. Still a top lane to see coming into this game and having a factor as high as positioning himself to get damage on Pole Belter. He's not having any of it. He knows what's happening. Yeah. There's a bit of a roam coming now because there's been two turrets taken down by Cloud9, meaning the control is being lost for Evil Geniuses right now. I also kind of want to point out the squishy build that's coming out from everyone on EG is because they're trying to rely on the defensive capabilities of having Lulu mid by building more damage elsewhere. Snoopy would almost never go Spirit of the Elder Blizzard to a Brutalizer on Vi, right. because as soon as he go, goes in, he would theoretically blow up. But if he has the Lulu alt or the Lulu move speed going in, then he might have a little bit more survivability. They're going to have to get into those fights pretty soon, though, because if they lose all three of their turrets, it's going to be very tough for them to come back here. Well, Cloud9 is warding up, so those fights do not happen. We just saw Meteos in another ward by Cloud9 get placed up near the Wraiths. And that red buff that just spawned for Evil Geniuses. Snoopy has been punished at the red buff once now. Let's see if Meteos does it again. Yeah, limited wave clear here by Evil Geniuses. The wave push of Sneaky Sivir is rather relentless right now. They don't really have an answer for Balls' Shivana in the top lane either. Inox having to kind of let him have his day up there. EG in a tough spot. They're going to have to find a team fight if they can't defend that middle turret much longer. It really helps that Cloud9 can rely on somebody like Balls in the top lane being pushed in by Inox the entire time to go even and then start winning the lane when EG has to call Inox mm. to the fights because they need a fifth person now. Yeah, good warding too there by Balls to mm -hmm. see the roam from Snoopy. Meanwhile, just notice how there's a bit of a 1-3-1 split push going on here for Cloud9. Yeah. Shivana Sivir on the sides and still a pretty solid crew in the middle. If they land any type of stun here, whether it's a cocoon from Elise or a stun from Lemonation, they have the damage potential to get a kill, even if it's just a three-man squad. Good damage still coming out from Pobelter. Still bringing out the ooze oh. and the ahs, and there's a little shocking off from Krepo. They go on to Lemon Nation. They don't want that Timbers out, but he, he does get found, and Krepo is going to be taking big damage from high on the side. They get two. Snoopy and Krepo fall very fast in that, and it looks like the turret will come right after. Yeah, that was really poorly done by Evil Geniuses. They ulted the support instead of the damage dealer, and Snoopy got focused down really quickly. After that, EG had no damage left. Cloud9 just pushed him in. Nice little shield there, getting some mana back for himself. A true shot barrage being used to give the turret some breathing room, but it doesn't look like they'll be able to initiate. Using the clone out, and Inox. Ooh, that was oh. close. That was really close. That would have been one dead high if that landed. But even so, Cloud9 now has the three outer turrets down. Their relentless lane pushing is definitely paying off right now. Take a look at this fight one more time. We just watch Snoopy, how heavily he got focused down, but it's Krepo who ended up getting the Lulu Walter, and he didn't need it initially. He still died because there was no damage coming back, and they were opting into a 3v4. Uh, not a clean fight for EG. They also went in after the Leona ult had been used. Very just haphazard play there. They were not coordinated, which is a surprise. Evil Geniuses is normally a very coordinated team. See what they can do now with Inox coming down. He'll probably head back up to clear that wave. 
but they need to figure out what to do next. Cloud9 is completely in the driver's seat right now. You see Meteos and Lemonation even setting up just a, a pick for Snoopy. They know they would easily be able to take him out with zero resistances in his build so far. Yeah. This is becoming happy fun time for Cloud9 right now. Uh, they have all three outer turrets cleared. Yeah. They're trying to get ward control in the dragon area, and they know that if they get an edge in any of the fights, using the Sivir move speed, they can chase down and not have to worry about EG falling back into turrets because they are all dead already. If they can control this dragon, it will be more valuable than the first dragon of the game and will really just catapult their gold lead to a point where they can start tower diving. It's like a pick comp that morphs into the stampede when it needs to. It's very scary. <laughs> very speedy, speedy fast team. Speedy fast. If High doesn't finish him off, everybody else will be there too. We're going to get the dragon going down now. Cloud9 gets that one in their favor. They're not going to be worried about the first one. So one dragon to EG, one to Cloud9, but it looks like Cloud9 will be spending a lot of time on EG's side of the map from here on out. Yeah, considering how clean EG's victory was yesterday, this game is far from that. Mm -hmm. Cloud9 is a very high caliber team. They didn't let any of EG's tricks fool them early on. Now they stuck with the lanes very well. You can see Anox desperately trying to farm. He needs a lot more time if he wants to get his Yasuo items up. And unless Pobelter timely uses ultimates on Snoopy when he goes in, there is no good initiation for evil geniuses that won't just get blown up as soon as they go in. Well, they have just as good a disengage as they do engage with that on the hunt. Mm -hmm. And speaking about on the hunt, more more so of Sneaky, with him on Sivir, he's, he, it's just like he's put a little bit of aggro into the utility champions he used to play. Now he can be in the fight. He's still 0, zero 4 providing yep. the support for his team. He's trying AD. to go, though. They see that LeBlanc is not near the fight. Got to land those, though. Looks like bottom lane getting pushed. Here comes LeBlanc from the flank. Get it back in. They're still waiting. Sneaky on the backside. Throws on the hunt. Down. Krepo is going to be the first one in. There's the good attack on the lemon. High is trying to get in for the big damage this time, though. He looks to be going strong. And Inox. Inox on the backside. Flow shield comes up. He's still going to be going down to Meteos. Now they finally turn on to High. He has been doing quite a bit of roaming, but he still gets the kill to come out strong onto Snoopy. And Cloud9, in a chaotic fight, is able to pick up three. Yeah, I gotta say, I like the thought of EG going in, but Cloud9 is just executing better in these team fights. They are just outplaying them mechanically. A tricky fight for EG, but they end up losing more people and the turret afterwards. Whoa! That's not what you want right there. Yellow Pete's gonna get hit up a few times. The shield comes on from Pobalter, and it looks like Ooh. they may be able to turn one around. Not enough damage. They leave each other limping. Yeah, that was not the fight EG wanted. Kreppel was caught out of position, and you can see he decided to turn it right away and get the jump on Lemon Nation, but watch. They burn almost everything on Lemon Nation, and then specifically, watch for the Lulu ultimate. He throws it really early onto Ezreal up top where he didn't necessarily need it. They could have used that in the brunt of the team fight, but they were just kind of out of sorts. It was because High scared him into it, and then Yellow Pete actually dodged the burst by himself. Generally, I think you should save the Lulu ultimate for the people who can't mechanically outplay. Right. Like Ezra, who can dodge a lot of the LeBlanc stuff. Tricky situation for Paul po Belter to be in. When his entire team builds squishy like that, he's forced into kind of protecting everyone. And at the moment, he just doesn't have faith in the rest of his team to save themselves. It always gets scary as a support when you see two fights breaking out, and you're like, uh, I have a decision to make. Let's see if they can keep it going. It's not looking too grim just yet, but with the way Cloud9 handles themselves after this, having this much of a lead, it's not looking good. 34.6 to 28,000 gold. Seven kills already for Cloud9, and they've been taking down turrets like nobody's business. The mid is all the way opened up, so all they have is these side turrets to be taking down, but they may just go for that inhibitor first. Yeah, four turrets to zero. Very difficult place mm -hmm. to be in. EG loves to force fight after fight when they're down like this. Going for the long haul now, and Yellow Pete with a great true shot barrage passing through the entire team. Meteos comes in, answers back with a retribution kill as Krepo is going to burn down from the ignite but they pick up two right on top of each other, and they will continue. Jet, Yellow Pete's forced to flash. They won't follow on Pobelter or the speed steroid, so it looks like they back off. It's not looking good. Yeah, a three for one that time for Cloud9. EG does a lot of this, actually. Mm -hmm. When they sense they're down a little bit in a, in a game, they will try and force team fights really quickly because they want to jumpstart their way back into the game. Uh, it rarely works for them. That was a situation where they were hoping Cloud9 didn't have five people in the area, but they did Sometimes you got to be a team that just takes that chance. We'll see if they can keep going in. The bottom lane, we said before, 201 to 158 is going to make it tough. 
Sneaky yeah. is a huge factor in these fights. Uh, with Leon Ultimate did not help matters much. And it was uh, specifically balls coming from the side that really ruined EG's day. Once he entered the fight, uh, there was no turning it around. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, again, like not a bad thought of an initiation because you have to force things in order to come back into the games. You have to put yourself in low percentage positions in order to come back. That was just a little bit too low percentage. Too many unknowns before that fight. You can see EG trying to get what they can here, scratching at the mid turret, but it takes all five of them. They can't even have Inox off split pushing right now. They need to make sure they don't also get engaged on that. On the hunt, such a scary factor. The Talisman of Ascension is not finished on the side of EG, so they can get caught out quite easily. Yeah, and the five of them being in the mid lane here, down 8,000 gold. Mm -hmm. They should not be there long. Yeah, they're back in the lane. They got good wards on the bottom side, so it doesn't look like they can. Oh, it doesn't look like they'll be hit up while they're backing. I was going to say, Cloud Nine is also going to use this time get themselves a little more structured for the next attack. They know EG does not have much more left in them. Just looking at the inventories in general, High is ready to blow anybody up. We already have Meteos building into pure damage with the Leandri's finish there onto his golem. So these guys know they have the lead. Yeah, a lot of credit to High for playing the lane so well mm -hmm. against Lulu. Lulu generally beats almost every lane matchup, and High did good to stay aggressive early and never really let Pobelter get the upper hand. Likewise, the rest of the Cloud9 team kept a high enough frequency of fights that he wasn't trapped in lane against Lulu. He could often roam around, and Pobelter was distracted with other responsibilities. So now that they're at this point in the game, you can see Pobelter really doesn't have much ability power uh, and is not a huge factor yet on Lulu. This dragon fight, if EG decided to contest, would be probably a disaster, but it could be an opportunity they want to take. Danger, danger. That's what we said the EG motto is, take it as it comes, and it looks like they're going to have to take this fight. Snoopy goes down instantly with the build. He's been forced to go through this game. Double kill coming in for Sneaky as he comes in from the backside on the hunts, wearing off already, and it looks like they've won the fight they needed. Yeah, that was the danger. Cloud9 is way too fast. As soon as they saw the opportunity, Sivir popped on the hunt, and that's exactly what they went and did. Snoopy blew up immediately. Uh, no tank stats on Vi. He built that aggressive build, and then was completely shut out of farm afterwards. His jungle was invaded. They are nothing but team fights. He is gold starved through yep. and through. Completely blows up. Maybe they're going to try a desperation steal here, but Hai is the defender right now. Ooh. Oh, he goes back in. He nope, he goes back in. Baron going down, Pete trying to use the last bit of his mana to fend off high there. We saw he almost got killed, but Pobelter, the saving grace with wild growth, so that's also going to be down here. Cloud9 easily cleaning up this in the mid lane. They have not lost a turret yet this game, which goes to show their rotation, map control, everything has been top notch so far. Yeah, Cloud9 looks good right now. And they're going to lose this. Go figure. Yeah. Playing there. Their conventional stuff, LeBlanc is a very popular pick. Sivir is banned at the highest level of play. Siobhan is Balls' uh, most played champion now yeah. as well. You know, they're just picking what they're good at. This is what Cloud9 has always excelled at doing, not necessarily having to be outside the box. They play what they are good at, and they make it work. With execution. They're trying for something. He's going the other way, though. They're looking for the elusive Aww. Balls. Farming in the bottom lane now. He's just doing some working out. Don't bother a guy when he's working out. Just 007 right now as well. Good score. Yeah, he is. Wow, fancy that. Let's see if he can do anything secret in the bottom lane. He's calling his team over here. Looks like they got the whisper comms going on, but they're all going to show up for the surprise party. Bottom turret is the next one to go down. I was wrong. It's not going to be mid. Yeah, they're going to take the out the indefensible this. Yeah. turret as far as teams with Baron buff go. Don't want to try it just yeah. yet. Hold at the base turret. It is stronger, it is a bigger choke point, harder to dive through. But at this point, with the strength that Cloud9 has, yeah. uh, they may well go in for something. With Wind Wall down, I love Watch the stuff go. bounce if, up. If they yeah. decide to go in though, they're gonna basically have to do it without oh. creeps. Lulu can push back this creep wave very well just by glitter lancing it down. Cloud9 is Dove turrets before, though. They Snoopy, know how to do it. Snoopy's still building up quite a bit of damage. They're really focused on yeah. him being that catapult for Inox they're to gonna get go. in. Yeah, they're in. Yellow P, he again gets the wild growth, but it doesn't last too long. They're going to trade back on one. No, not yet. 
Snoopy goes down there. Finally, Sneaky gets hit up too hard. Pobelch is on the backside. The clone comes out from high. He's passive. They're trading back and forth, but the ace is going to be all she wrote coming in for Cloud9. Yeah, a really crazy looking fight there. Cloud9 just went all in. You can see Inox. The potential of this EG team composition was there. Inox just about blew up Sneaky by himself. Uh, but they are just so yeah. far behind at this point. It's Ball's going even in the top lane. Let's actually see this fight. Yeah, first. watch the Asuo. He has a pretty good combo here. He chains his own knockup. And the fact that him and Crepo get on Sneaky right away, they blow him up. Uh, but aside from that, because they were just sitting in that dragon fire the entire time, the rest of their team dropped down. Nice little move by High there. Uh, good stun by Crepo to close him out. But it was just the overwhelming force of Cloud9. There's too many people in there with too many stats. And the game has just been going this way the entire time since minute one. Balls did not allow Inox to get really any kills or farm ahead of him in the top lane. So you don't have the Infinity Edge, Static Shiv, Yasuo taking everybody out right now. You're yeah. still waiting for that. Meteos was in Snoopy's hair the whole time. Hi was taking out Pobalter and causing him trouble. Usually you only have a few of those. They have every one of them mounting against EG right now, and that's why this just looks so clean. 13,000 gold down, only 30 minutes in. Uh, EG would need some kind of a miracle here. You can see Sneaky continuing to build up damage. You know they want to end it before Inox gets a lot of items, uh, but there's not, yeah. there's not a, a heavy need to, only because Sivir is so powerful right now. Uh, as long as he can stay clear of Inox better than he did last fight, just the ricochets alone, combined with Shivana, uh, the amount of AoE damage that that brings to team fights. Also, just because Lemonation has had so much gold, he has a Leandris on, on Annie. And a funny thing is, Annie's one of the best things to get Leandris on because the Tibbers itself will do the Leandris procs for uh, current health percentage just by being next to someone. It's mean. It's pretty hot there. They don't need two of them, though. If I was Cloud9 <laughs> and I was Medios, I'd say, why you uh, Building the Andrews, I already had it. If you're burning the same person with two Leandrews, it doesn't double, it just refreshes the existing tick, so it doesn't help that much. They like to think so. This is a very hard turn to defend. EG should not be here. Well, they weren't there on the bottom side. I guess the top side's, whoa, Snoopy go, he's already dead. He's we gone. didn't even get to see that yep. happen. He just like went to a black hole. If you go off the bottom of the screen, you die. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that's how every game works. They're still going. The turret's not even there. Wrong way, EG. Faces the other way, but Cloud9's not going to give you anywhere to run for safety. Pole Belter going to be going down quite soon. He was going down the last there. Oh. Yellow Pete's the one to get hit up. A nice boomerang over the shoulder of Sneaky. They got to go ahead and get another ace in the game. That's the second one for them. Should have ducked that one. 22 to 6. You can see as soon as EG was out for that turret, they shouldn't have been there. Giovanni came from behind, and that's the surrender. Much needed. There he is. Get the stretch on. What a workout for Balls in the top lane. Shivana, doing a pretty hey. good game for himself. Some pretty good scores, actually. 2-0 and 15 for Balls, 8-0 and 10 for Meteos. Dynamic duo right there. I'd say the Meteos and Balls top lane jungle synergy is higher than any other combo like that in the North American LCS. Yep. So often you think about the mid laner and the jungler. For a lot of times, Cloud9 is about the top laner and the jungler because those two always seem to wreck out. Cloud9, again, a very, very slow, methodical game. It wasn't anything out of ordinary for them there. Medios with his regular counter jungling once or twice. The rest of the team with consistent lane wins. How hard is it to win a game against Cloud9 when you can't get the lanes to be in your favor? Yeah, something that kind of fell by the wayside discussion-wise was how good individually Cloud9 has always been. When they joined the LCS back in the spring split of 2013, yeah. summer split of 2013, they were almost their entire team top 10 of Challenger. They've obviously not kept up with that exact amount of solo queue because they've been more focused on the team play, yeah. but that's the